the trapezium rule, um, which is one of the methods we can use to integrate if we don't know how to integrate the function we've got. And it's going to be based on our GCSE rules that we had for the, uh, the area of the trapezium. Um, the area of the trapezium rule was that you added the top and the bottom together, divided by 2, and times by the height. So for this triangle here, for this trapezium here, we've got a half times the top plus the bottom times by the height. The height here is 8. So we've got 20, and a half of 20 is 10, 10 times 8 is 80. And the area of that shape was 80 centimetres squared. We're going to use that to try and find out what this shaded area here is. Clearly, if I wanted to find out the area of this perfectly, I'd want to try and integrate. But we don't have a method yet for integrating 2 to the power of x. What we're going to try and do is look at each of these. And you could say, well, let, let's do lots of little rectangles here. And actually, that is a process that you're going to look at for in Core 3. It's called the mid-ordinate rule. So what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and put lots of little trapeziums here. Each little trapezium here has got a side there and a side there and the height between them. And we're roughly joining these things up with little lines. Clearly sometimes these lines will be just below the curve, sometimes just above. And we're going to figure out whether it will be an overestimate or an underestimate. Um, let's try and develop this rule all together then, and what I'll do over the next couple of slides is figure out how you get the rule, and then we'll look at how we use it. Um, just using this, here it is, we've got a half, the top plus the bottom, times by the width here. We call it H still, even though it's on its side now. And, and my shape here, let's get rid of all this, uh, all this yellow stuff and just look at that first little bit at the bottom here. The first little bit here, we've got the width across there, the first height, which is the y value, and the second height here. Now we'll put another trapezium on, and again we've got the height again, the width is the same as we had before, and the new y value up the side here. So we've got two y values there. Here's a third trapezium on again, and the third trapezium. This time I've got the height and I've got y3. And the area of this trapezium, again, is the top plus the bottom divided by 2 times by the height. So I'm writing here. The top plus the bottom divided by 2 times by the height. Let's put a fourth one on. A fourth trapezium here. Again, the width is h. The new height is h4. And our area, the top plus the bottom divided by 2 times the height. I'll write it again. The top plus the bottom divided by 2 times by the height. So this big long formula here looking like this, and you can see there's quite a few common factors here and quite a few things looking the same. We've got a half an h, a half an h, a half an h, a half an h in all of them. So I'm going to take that out as a factor, a half h. And look, I've got y0 plus y1, y1 plus y2, y2 plus y3, y3. So I've got two of those. I've got two of those. I've got, in fact, I've got two of everything through the middle. So I've got the formula of a half times h, the first and the last, and two lots of everything in between. And this is the trapezium formula that we're going to be using for our shape. In general, it could continue. We could go on for an on and on and on. You can get as many as you like of them in the middle here, and the last one, and the first one on the end there. And it's given to you in the formula book, so you don't actually need to remember this. This is what the formula book says. It says, I'm trying to integrate this thing with respect to x. This says it's approximately equal to. It's not exactly equal to. The width, h, divided by 2, the first, plus the last, and two lots of everything ever in between. The other little bit here is just saying, well, what is the width? And the width is how far you're going divided by how many you're splitting it into. Let's try and use this formula. This is the one we had 
in the beginning. And we're doing this with, it's what called, it's called five ordinates. What that means is we're going to be looking at one, two, three, four, five Y numbers to look into it. And can you see how we got five numbers? It means we're splitting it into four strips. So the width of this then, I know you can see that it's one, but we're going from minus one to three, which is four, in four gaps. So H must be one. If you could have just spotted that for me, thank you. So let's work out what our heights are. This first one here is when X is minus one. So our y value is 2 to the power of minus 1, which is a half. And I've not stopped recording there, just clicking that. No, I haven't. I should move that out of the way. Let's put that over there. So let's write that a bit clearer. For this first one, we're looking at minus 1. We're doing 2 to the power of minus 1, which is a half. The next one here, when x is 0, we're doing 2 to the power of 0. Anything to the power of 0 is always 1. Now we're doing 2 to the power of 1, which is 2. 2 to the power of 2, which is 4. And 2 to the power of 3, which is 8. So we've worked out all the numbers we want. Now let's throw them in this formula. So looking at this formula at the top here, we've got a half times h, a half times 1. Lots of y0, that was a half, plus two lots of 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8. So we're working this out, and normally we're doing this on the calculator. That's 7, two sevens of 14, 14 and 8 is 22. So I've got a half times 22 and a half. My area then is 11 and a quarter. The area of this shape here has turned out to be 11 and a quarter. Well, really it's time for you to do one now, and what I would suggest is you push pause here and try this. Sketching the graph first of all, and you might need to plot a few points if you can't remember what that graph looks like. We've got six ordinates, so that means you're getting six different values. One, two, three, four, five, six. That means one, two, three, four, five gaps you're splitting it into. And work out what the y value is for each of them. I'll show you how to figure out that it's an overestimate or an underestimate in a second. So push pause now while you have a go at that, and the answer will come up in a second. So how do you do? The graph, the uh, 12 divided by x graph, has this shape here. And we were looking to going from, it said, go from 0 0.5 all the way up to 3. And we were splitting it into five gaps, one, two, three, four, five bits. And that's why we needed one, two, three, four, five, six different x values. All I've done here is work out what all the y values are. So I've got 12 divided by 0 0.5 is 24. 12 divided by 1, 12 divided by 1 and a half, 12 divided by 2, 12 divided by 2 and a half and 12 divided by 3. These are all the y values. And then I've thrown it into the formula. The formula was h, the width, divided by 2, the first plus the last, and two lots of everything in between. And my answer is 22.4. Deciding whether it's an overestimate or an underestimate, you can show this by just doing a little bit of extra on the graph. If I just joined up, a few of these points here that from 0 0.5 down to 1, from 1 to 1.5, 1 1.5 1 .5 to 2, 2 to 2.5, you'll notice even though the orientation of the board's not great, that the line here is always above the curve. So our line is above our curve, so we've overestimated it. If we were going in this direction, then our lines would look like this and we would have been underestimating it there since our lines were under our curves. Well, your job now would be to go away and try do review sheet F, the one on trapezium rule, and hand that to your teacher uh, later next week when it's due. I hope that helps.